Safari received a pretty modest update inside of iOS 13. And so in this video, we're gonna go over some of the new features and useful updates in Safari. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. The first thing you'll notice when you fire up Safari is the new revamped start page. The start page includes access to your favorite websites as usual, but Siri suggestions will also surface relevant websites in your browsing history, along with frequently visited websites, links sent to you in messages app, and more. The new start page is designed to let you get to what most interests you quickly, and it makes sure that you don't forget to check out the websites that were recommended to you by friends and family. The URL bar received a new icon on the left denoted by two A's. Selecting this icon will give you access to following settings like resizing text, enabling reader view, hiding the toolbar, and requesting desktop website. There is also an option for more website settings that will give you the ability to tweak settings for each website. You can set the site you're on to load in the reader view automatically or to always load as a desktop website. You can also enable or disable content blockers on a per website basis and toggle access to the camera, microphone, and your location. Speaking of website settings, if you head into the Safari section of the settings app, there are new per site controls that let you adjust even more settings for the specific websites. So in addition to the one we just mentioned, you can also tweak page zoom. And if you've enabled some of these settings on a per site basis using the view menu, such as turning on request website for Mac rumors, you can disable the presets or delete them in the website settings section using the edit menu for each category. Safari in iOS 13 gives you the ability to manage image size when uploading a photo. You can now choose whether to upload the image as large, medium, small, or actual size. There are also some new options around tabs, which will now let you bookmark all of your open tabs to make it easy to get to them at a later date. Simply long press the bookmark icon and then select add bookmarks for X amount of tabs that you have open. You can save them inside of a folder, and then if you want to reopen them as tabs in the future, simply long press on the folder and then select open in new tabs option. There's also an option to copy the contents, which is new inside of iOS 13. When you start typing the address of a website that's already open in another tab, Safari will direct you to the open tab in iOS 13 rather than opening up a new tab. This will make sure that you don't have too many unnecessary tabs open. Finally, the last notable tabs option is the ability to have your tabs be automatically closed after a set period of time. Head back into the Safari section of the settings menu and select close tabs. And from here, you can select manually close tabs or have them auto closed after one day, one week, and one month. The share sheet in iOS 13 has been redesigned, making options like copy, add to reading list, add bookmark, and more easier to get to with the new list style view. There's also a new feature for sharing an entire web page as a link, a PDF, or in reader view from the share sheet. And through the options interface, you can now choose whether to send the content as a PDF or a web archive. Even though this new feature is not enabled in the beta right now, Apple is introducing a new sign in with Apple feature that's a privacy focused alternative to existing sign in options from companies like Twitter, Google, or Facebook. As I mentioned before, sign in with Apple is a new feature that the company introduced back at WWDC that will work in Safari across iOS and macOS. Sign in with Apple is designed to let you sign in with various apps and websites using your existing Apple ID as an authentication method. Unlike sign in options from Google, Twitter, and Facebook, Apple's new option doesn't track or profile you when using sign in with Apple. With sign in with Apple, there's no need to create a login name or email address when signing up for a new website account. Sign in with Apple is authenticated via face or touch ID, and your information is further protected by two factor authentication. Apple even created a hide my email feature that lets you create unique single use email addresses that forwards to your real email address and efforts to keep your information hidden. And last but not least, Safari on iPadOS has introduced a few new features like 30 additional keyboard shortcuts and most notably, the ability to display desktop class websites rather than mobile view, which really gives users a viewing experience close to what you would get on a Mac. Safari also features a new download manager that works across iPadOS and iOS that matches the download manager found in Safari for desktop. When you choose to download a file such as an image, a little download icon is displayed in the top right corner of the display. Tapping on this icon will now let you see the files that you've downloaded, and then tapping on the magnifying glass next to any file opens it in its enclosing folder. You can even change the default location for where downloads are saved inside of the Safari section of the settings app. So let us know your thoughts on Safari for iOS 13 in the comment section down below. 
This has been Dan with Macrumors. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.